Hi everybody and welcome to this week's LEGO Technic video. Today I'll be presenting my latest two-speed automatic gearbox. Now the point of difference with this gearbox is the fact that it's got two motors. It's got one main motor and one booster motor. So the booster motor is only going to be activated once it's high enough load on the output and it switches to the secondary gear. So the idea for this gearbox came about from having presented many different types of two-speed automatic gearboxes and one of my most successful one has been this one that's been implemented into a two-speed automatic car. Now in the last video I presented this car driving up a ramp successfully, uh, it was about 45 degrees and the way this particular gearing mechanism works is I'm actually disengaging a gear to change gears and by doing that I'm simplifying the gear path. So what I mean by simplifying the gear path is in general I've got this gear switching set up, uh, I've got the input on the left here, on the top path we've got a gearing ratio of A, and on the bottom path we've got a gearing ratio of B and they're being added up through a differential to give us an overall output O. And then the automatic gearbox, once it detects a sufficient torque on the output, it will uh, activate or deactivate this path B. And we can either, we've got two options, we can either connect path B to create a secondary gear by having B be negative, so we get A minus B as the new out, output, which is the lower gear ratio. Or the other way of doing this, we can have B connected and then disconnect by disengaging when we're switching gears. And that's exactly what I've done in the two-speed automatic gearbox for the car. We're disengaging and that just leaves this path here for the overall power transmission. This is a simpler gearing path uh, for the secondary gear which has some advantages in terms of power loss. Now the problem with disengaging a gear that it can be quite difficult just using the standard LEGO Technic uh, switch that's been provided. Uh, once there's a bit of torque on that red uh, gear it's actually quite hard to disengage. So in the car uh, the disengaging mechanism I've used is just simply two bevel gears that move in and out like that. And when there is some torque on those two gears, it can still be relatively easy to move them apart, unlike the uh, switch. However, for this new design, what I thought I'd really explore uh, the idea of engaging a gear rather than disengaging. Um, now, like I said, when you engage a gear, the overall gearing path for the secondary gear where there is the high load uh, is more complex. You've got power traveling along path A and along path B. And so the idea of this um, new gearbox is that when you do switch gears to that secondary path by using gear engagement uh, is that you at the same time turn on a secondary motor to provide extra power to overcome those power losses that are incurred due to the uh, gear engagement and creating a more complex secondary path. So how do you turn on the secondary motor as you need to? Well what I've used is this component here which is called a pole reversing switch. Uh, this is actually a component I only acquired recently. It actually uh, came out probably about 12 years ago now, I think it was 2008. Uh, so here it is, uh, it's got three positions, so it's got one, two and three. Uh, so uh, for example one of the right positions will be going uh, for example in forward direction. This is off and this is in reverse so it gives you three different options and you can drive that by placing an axle through uh, this hole or directly through the top here so in my case I've uh, put an axle through here and then uh, used a couple of uh, gears to be able to control that switch and the only part of the switch I'm using is simply on and off so as the uh, secondary gear gets activated by the torque detector that switch can get uh, turned off and on in order to control the uh, secondary motor now of course when the booster motor is off it needs to be disengaged from the overall gearing mechanism because otherwise it will be driven by the primary motor. And the way I do that I've got the switch at the bottom connected to the secondary motor and then when um, the uh, gearbox switches gears um, the orange rotor catch will move across and engage that secondary motor which at the same time is turned on by that switch. So when that secondary motor is being engaged it's also simultaneously uh, the orange rotor catch is also moving the switch uh, across here to engage the secondary path or the path B in the diagram uh, and in this case for the path B I've got a gearing ratio of 5 ninths so I've got path B coming across the top here this differential here implements a 1 third gearing uh, ratio and also prevents uh, back rotation uh, when it's disengaged and when path B is disengaged I want to make sure that can't be driven backwards I've kind of got that different differential set up uh, in such a way that it does that uh, then goes through this gearing ratio of 5 6 to give us an overall gearing ratio of 5 ninths for path B. Uh, so that means that when we're in gear 1, uh, the overall gear path is just A, and that gives us a 1 to 1 ratio between the input motor and the output. And then uh, when gear B is engaged through that orange rotary catch, 
we end up adding uh, minus five ninths to overall output which gives us four ninths at the output for the uh, secondary gear when uh, the gears do switch uh, due to a high torque load. So for the torque detector on the output in order to switch gears what I've got is just a uh, regular differential for that torque detection. Uh, so the torque detection stage is pretty much from this part onwards and it's pretty much shown by this diagram here. So here we've got our input to the torque detection stage uh, which is pretty much this point here. Uh, this input goes through a summing differential which is shown there and we've got our torque detection differential underneath and uh, the way this is laid out I've got a gearing ratio of A between the input and input uh, the here to the torque detector this is pretty much a one to one to, into that differential and then I've got a gearing ratio of B from the output of the torque detector back to that uh, differential here and if you go through the equations what happens is when the torque detection is not rotating then the ratio between the input and the output is simply given by this equation here. It's 4AB minus 1. Uh, however, when there's high load on the output, what that means is that the output will um, not, almost not be rotating. And then the ratio between the uh, output of the torque detector T over the input is 2A minus 1B. And the trick is to choose an A and B that gives us uh, good values. And what we really want is that this path here has got a low rotation, so there's a minimal power losses from that torque detector you want most of the uh, speed to be going through this path so that you minimize the power losses and what I've done in this case I've chosen an A of 1 90th uh, and B equal to 3 and that gives us that over ratio between here and here is 4 1 90th minus 1 so it's pretty close to 1 across this path and then uh, when there's high load on the output uh, 2 90th is very small uh, so we end up with about 1 -third for the ratio between the uh, torque detecting ratio uh, to the input. So this torque detector um, differential here, that output will rotate at about one third of the speed of the input to drive the orange rotary catch for the uh, gear changing. Okay, I hope the explanation made sense. Uh, if you do need more detail, I do invite you to look at some of my other two-speed automatic gearbox videos. It goes into more detail about the uh, torque detectors and the power and torque calculations and things like that. However, in the meantime, I think uh, the best thing to do now is just to demonstrate the gearbox to you. Okay, so I've got it connected up to my 9 volt power supply through this battery box over here. Uh, the whole system set up, ready to go. What you will need to watch is this particular little lever here. That is the secondary motor activation um, pole switch. So as soon as that moves forward, that will turn on that secondary motor. Uh, and again, that of course, it happens once that orange rotary catch rotates uh, around sufficiently due to the torque detector. So let's turn her on. Okay, so this is the gearbox just without any loading on the output. We've got our output axle on the right there. Uh, we've just got the one input motor going. The secondary booster motor is not going. We've got uh, pretty much all the um, rotation through the main path. We can see that the um, torque detector path is rotating very slowly, which is desirable to minimize the losses in that secondary path. And then as soon as we start putting some loading on the output, uh, we should see that orange rotary catch wanting to rotate and activate the secondary path as well as the booster motor. Okay, let's see what happens. So now we've got the secondary path rotating and if I put more loading on, the booster motor gets activated so you can hear the, um, the extra motor going now. I remove the loading and I'll switch back again uh, to gear one and this is gear two. Uh, with the booster motor activated. You can hear the booster motor activating and this is it disconnected again and with the booster motor. Okay so that's a bit of manual testing of the gearbox. I've now connected my load creation device. Now if you haven't seen this one before from some of my previous videos the way this works I've got a series of these white clutch gears and each of these can be activated by moving across one of the uh, axles with a stop to block them from rotating and what that will do allow me to create 10 levels of uh, resistance torque on the output so let's just try that we'll turn them all off first we'll turn on the gearbox uh, it's now rotating uh, we're in first gear as we add more loading it'll try to switch gears and it's really switched gears just now it hasn't quite activated the secondary motor so by adding more loading on that you can see it's now been activated and it's all rotating a little bit faster and more powerfully. Uh, there's a little bit of clicking in the gearbox. Um, the framing is not quite right to prevent that, of course, with the 
secondary motor adding more power to the system it does put more strain on the gears but we can add significantly more loading out on the output without too much trouble but again uh, we can hear those gears are slipping unfortunately uh, but yeah we can probably go all the way to level 10 and uh, create a real issue for, for the gearbox now that's just the, the framing issue now of course like I say with all the extra uh, power generated by the secondary motor um, it is much harder to prevent uh, the gear slippage so we'll just go back to gear one and there we go we're back in first gear so uh, yes I think um, you know I mean this experiment has demonstrated that a secondary booster motor does add more power but because the extra power does uh, of course affect the slippage of the gears which has been a big issue for this gearbox and it's actually very difficult to get the framing such that uh, there is no gear slippage uh, but of course it's not ideal it doesn't sound very good it doesn't make it sound like a very good gearbox so I think in conclusion uh, this idea is not a bad idea but in uh, my particular case probably need to do more work on uh, reducing the gear slippage within this gearbox so but anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it um, like i say you've always got to try ideas before you know if they're really going to work and in this case uh, i think it's a good idea in theory but uh, the practice definitely needs uh, some more work so thanks for watching uh, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time